have your Bible, stand on your feet. If you're not there already, we're about to read the Word of God, and then we're going to pray. I'm not going to try to keep you too long. Look at somebody and say, Pastor said 15 minutes, and we're out of here. <laughs> Y'all didn't let me finish. Times three. <laughs> See, he's always pulling that math on us. Come on. Okay, I want to bring to you, I believe, what God has touched my heart with today. I don't normally come to the pulpit with two Bibles, but I did bring the NIV with me today because I want you to hear a portion of Scripture out of that, which kind of breaks the vernacular down of the King James. But right now, I want you to turn in your Bible to the book of Esther the book of Esther hallelujah how many's glad you're alive today how many wish that God would let the earth receive rain today I looked out in the pasture by the way the other day and I'm telling you when I was mowing what little grass I had to mow there must have been cracks four inches to five inches wide. And I made sure I didn't take my lawnmower in that direction. But I'm just telling you, we need rain. Look at your neighbor and say, we need rain. And I'm not just talking about the natural rain. We need spiritual rain. There's a drought in the land. And God wants to pour out his spirit and revive the church. I believe God wants to wake up the church. I really believe we need to call men and women to the battleground one more time. We got one more river to cross. And we got one more mountain to climb. Don't make me sing right now. But I'm telling you the devil's defeated. Here we are at the book of Esther. And I want to take you, for the sake of time, I'm just going to tell you to go to chapter 4. I'll break it down in a minute. I'll read as quickly as I can. If you're in Esther chapter 4, you say, where's that at? Go to Psalms and take a left turn. Then you're going to hit Job. Skip over Job and you got Esther. Here we go. Chapter 4 of Esther beginning with verse 1 when Mordecai perceived all that was done Mordecai rent his clothes tore them put on sackcloth with ashes he went out into the midst of the city somebody shout the city yeah. cried with a loud and a bitter cry and came even before the king's gate for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth and in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, fasting and weeping and wailing. And many, somebody shout many, lay in sackcloth and ashes. Now think about this. Last verse right there. So Esther's maids... And her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment or clothes to Mordecai and told him to take off his sackcloth from him. Watch this. But he received it not. Now look at verse 11. There's a scheme in this story by an evil man named Haman who wants to destroy God's people. Mordecai is getting the message to Esther who's in the palace. This is actually a beauty contest. There's 120 provinces of the kingdom. Belmead, come on somebody. A hundred valley mills, there's 120 in the area of the kingdom. The king is a bachelor and he needs a wife. The, the bachelor didn't come on TV first. It's in your Bible. And so now we see 
He is mourning because Haman has said, King, if you'll give me the authority as the lead right-hand man, I will destroy all of God's people, the Jew. They didn't say God's people, but how many knows they are God's people? But then the church, you are God's people. How many believe you have an enemy? You ought to touch your neighbor right here and say, tell my enemy I'm back. Come on. Now, now watch, because here's what happens. She gets the word. She don't want him mourning. And then the Bible says that there was a law passed in verse 11 that whether there was a, anyone that would come into the presence of the king who is not called, he said there is one law of his to put him to death except such to, such to whom the king shall hold out the golden sepulcher that he may live. Verse 13. 12 said, they told to Mordecai Esther's words. I can't go into the king or I'll lose my life because of the law. Mordecai, verse 13, commanded to answer Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement or someone else will arise and deliver the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Now I'm going to read you a verse that goes with this message. It's found in Isaiah 62 verse 6. God said, I have set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish, till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. I could go on, but I'm not. Heavenly Father, I ask you to anoint lips of clay. Father, allow us to know today that it is the anointing that destroys every yoke. That this house has been called to prayer. This house has been called to intercede for the lost and the dying and the hurting. We are the church that Jesus told the devil about. That we were given power over all the power of the enemy. Father, I'm praying today that souls will be saved in this house or watching live stream. I pray for deliverance from drugs, alcohol, perversion, what have you. Every sin, addiction, let it be broken and destroyed for your glory. And Father, we fail not to give all the praise into your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Now what? Wait, wait, don't sit down. Turn to your neighbor, give him a high five and say, silent, no more. Come on, tell somebody, I'm silent, no more. Tell somebody else, I'm silent, no more. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's put your hands together and give God a shout of praise. Come on, give God praise for the living word. This story has been in my spirit and I'm driving down the road and I'm weeping, Brother Calvin, and I, I'm in prayer and I'm weeping. Every time I read it, I'm weeping. Because this story reminds me of the modern day church. There are key players in this story today. Number one, the king is symbolic of our soon coming king. 
He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Can I get an amen? Esther is a type of the church. The modern day church who has been called and she's been appointed and God has given her a position, watch, watch, in the kingdom. Shout kingdom. Kingdom. You see, we let that word go in one ear and out the other. But God said that you and I are kings and priests unto the God we serve. He said that we're a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar, not weird, not strange, a different type of people from the world. Give God praise right there. God calls you his friend you're the friend of God God saved you and I through his son on the cross and all I'm telling you is the king is in this story and he's coming back I don't care what they say he's coming back as a matter of fact Esther a type of the church look at her life for 12 months in this story she has seven maids given to her by the king she don't have to do anything how many of you ladies like to go home today and someone's cleaned your house cooked your meal come on mow the yard come on your husband don't mow the yard you mow the yard (laughs) fed the dog and the cat can i get a witness in here wash the clothes iron the clothes fix the meal come on and he comes home and says what have you done today And you feel like giving him about a five-finger slap across his face. Well, I've done more than you've ever thought about. Come on. But here's the picture. We got a king. We got Esther, a type of the church. And when you look at the story, 12 months, Brother Calvin, she had to be purified to even come into the presence of the king, which tells me no sin shall enter the kingdom of heaven. He's a holy God. He has a holy people. Can I get a witness? And the Bible tells me in this story that, that, that here, here Esther, if you look at her, she, she's been bathing in oils for 12 months. They even said she had six months of giving cosmetics. Cosmetics right there in the story. She is being beautified. She's being adorned. Well, she's a type of the church in the spiritual context but she has flipped to the natural just like the modern day church today where preachers won't preach you the truth where everything has been sugar-coated concerning the living word of God where we've had preachers stand behind pulpits declaring it's a friendly church and you should be but it's an easy way to get to heaven some have said there's more than one way to get to heaven but I come to stand up and be silent no more and declare the devil is a liar and that Jesus is exalted and there's only one way you can enter heaven and that's through the blood and the name of of Jesus Christ the son of the living God touch somebody and say silent no more and you look at Esther she don't want to she hears what's happened you see she became the queen she won the contest and it's almost like the church today has experienced the blessings of God got a house to live in got clothes to wear automobiles to drive plastic money in your wallet (laughs) gold card sears card sam's card h-e-b card gas card you don't have to worry about anything you don't have to go to the word when he said i'll supply your every need according to his riches no man came up with a way to fix things himself that's why the church today don't see miracles like they used to because the church today is not hungry and thirsty for a move of a living god who still sits on the throne and all the good and perfect blessing come from above ain't no devil blessed you it was the God you serve 
and third world countries will come by the thousands and stand in the rain to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give him a praise in his house. The modern church is like Esther because she's complacent now. She's in the palace. She won the beauty contest. She uh, has seven maids and no telling how many servants. They call them eunuchs. They served her also messengers. She didn't have to go tell her uncle Mordecai who represents the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's telling her, did you hear what Haman, the right hand man of the king said he wanted to do? He has made up a law and it's to destroy all of the Jews. And, and by the way, Esther, the last time I looked, you are a Jew. Amen. And don't you think for a moment that if you stay silent, that you're going to escape the judgment and your whole family will be destroyed. That, that's really what took place here. But she's dealing with it. Just like the church today, we've been preaching on prayer. We've been preaching, Brother Calvin, on the Holy Ghost. Uh, we've been preaching on purification and getting sin under the blood. Uh, we've been challenging you and the church online to get outside the four walls and witness and bring people to the house of God. By the way, I want to give flowers to my nephew, Ray, him and his wife. They brought people to church today and my niece, Melody's here. Come on and give God praise and then there's others of you that I've seen come in the last two or three weeks and I'm watching the door this morning are they going to come again are they oh 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 there they are and what is that what is that if it makes me happy to see you try to come to hear the word of God and to get in God's presence what do you think your heavenly father thinks when you take time out of your busy schedule that he allowed you to have come on somebody you see Esther was busy she had a, a palace mentality now we got padded pews we're not sitting on old wooden benches at a brush harbor. When you sat down, you got up. The nail in the board ripped your pants. We're not out underneath the canopy of the straw and the poles and the little old light bulbs they used to hang up. And it was so hot, you couldn't hardly breathe. And if you did breathe, you didn't want to be downwind to somebody who didn't take a Saturday bath. I'm telling you right now, but when those people got in that brush harbor in those days and began to pray and sing, the power came down. People shouted, fell out under the anointing of God. Sinners ran to the front, fell on their face and said, God, I need you to save me before I kill myself. But the modern day Esther church is like the one John the Baptist said. They have declared in Revelations, we have no need. We're rich. We're increased with goods. You know what God said about that? He said, you know what? He said, you don't realize it, but you're naked. You're blind. You're miserable. You're wretched. Can I say this? I'll just stop and pause right here. Quick announcement, channel 25. There is no riches, no money, no fame, no fortune, no materialistic gain in this world who's going to take the place of the Jesus Christ that I'm talking about today. <laughs> Nothing satisfies like Christ. And that's something you need to realize. Esther was given a position. I started crying a while ago when I looked at Calvin playing the drums. Now, thank God, he just remarried and has a beautiful wife. Give God praise for Calvin's family. But back in the day when the enemy took the wife who was serving alongside of him then, 
I looked at him this morning. He's playing away. He's singing. I'm thinking about months ago, a year ago, Brother Calvin, nearly, when I called you on the phone driving down the road. I don't know. I, I wasn't planning on calling Brother Calvin. We, had, we were there to officiate the, the ceremony and the, 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 the celebration, yet a sad occasion. And, and Lana had passed this life and stepped into glory. But this man was left alone and he had children and issues and problems and daddy had to be daddy, mama, worked the job, all these things. And I thought to myself that the enemy was trying to destroy and we already know that. But I'm just, it just flipped through my mind. Just like some of you, how, how many can remember when you got saved? How many knows that the enemy has tried so many times to silence your voice? And I thought, well, the enemy said, I'll do this to the, to the, to the tall family. And he'll, he'll get so angry and mad and he'll, he'll get beside himself and, and he won't preach anymore. He won't sing anymore. He won't play the instrument that I gifted him with. He'll take a wrong turn. He deserves to do it by the ways of man. Something, something down inside began to call out. This poor man cried out. And the Lord heard my cry. Come on, raise that hand and give him praise. You've been there. You've been tempted to do commit suicide or go that direction or open that door. Oh, can I tell you, Haman, that evil one, he, he, he so hated. He hated Mordecai in the beginning of it. Why? Because Esther's uncle, when he was positioned to the right-hand man in the palace, a hundred or all the princes of the kingdom bowed down and they reverenced him. He had gotten the position. He was the right hand man to the king. The king gave him a ring. But Mordecai, he wouldn't bow. And because of that, this Haman, the evil one, you, you know, he, 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 he devised a plan. He went to the king. He said, these people these church people, these, these, these Pentecostals, these Baptists. Oh, y'all thought I was just going to stay there, didn't you? You Methodists, the Presbyterian, uh, they're, they're going to hurt the kingdom on the earth because they pray to another God. Now, he didn't say all that, but I'm just, I'm preaching, so I'm preaching it the way I want to preach it. He was telling them the Christians are going to mess you up. The church is going to mess you up. You don't want these people hanging around your people of the kingdom on the earth because they're going to change their mindset. Oh, let me tell you something. As much hate as he had, he had them to write up a law. Can I tell you over two years ago, they passed a law in America and they shut every church door down. You say, what's that got to do with this? It's a type of the Antichrist spirit that's going to rule the earth in totality after you and I, the church, has raptured seven years of tribulation like the world has never seen. I don't want to hang around to see it. Now, if you want to, I'll leave you my Bible. But I'm taking the first plane out. Come on, somebody. All I can tell you is, they're going to be, you're going to have to take a mark of the beast. Uh, let me go here just a little bit farther. Uh, You've got to take the shot. Come on. Oh, well, I'm, I'm not against the shot. Come on, I think everybody ought to have a right. I got people here that's taking the shot. But myself personally, I choose not to. At the same time, don't judge me, condemn me, hate on me. I got enough haters. But I'm not going to hate you and condemn you. 
I got grandchildren that had to take the shot because they worked in the hospital, Scott and White, in Temple. They threatened them and said, if you don't take it, you're fired. Really? So what does that got to do with us, Pastor? I mean, that is the laws of the land. Oh, yes, it is. It's a prelude to the mark of the beast. It's a prelude to let you know if we can dictate what you can do and what you can't do, the day will come when the church is gone and people are left behind. You will do exactly what they tell you to do. You will take the mark or lose your head. Come on, somebody. Or because you will not buy or sell, have a business, nothing. That's why it's important to not to be the part of the kingdom of this world. As a matter of fact, your Bible said God brought us out of that kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Can we give God praise for the kingdom? So Esther is so complacent. She's so busy. And it's amazing. She's like the modern church today, Brother Calvin. She heard that they were going to destroy God's people. But she said, I can't do nothing. They passed a law. Come on. And if I even go into the presence of the king without him motioning with his separature to come forward, I could die and lose my life. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what Jesus said. He that saves his life for his sake will lose it. But he that will lose his life for my sake shall keep it or live. Give God praise for life abundant. Paul said, I live. Yet not I that liveth, but Christ that liveth within me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith, shall faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I love this part. For when we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We didn't deserve salvation. We didn't deserve kingdomship. We didn't have a priest that would go and intercede before us. But I'm so glad that Emmanuel, come on. Oh, I'm going. I got to go quickly. Can I tell you that Haman so hurted, hurt God, hated God's people, wanted to destroy them. Then Mordecai puts on sackcloth and ashes. I know that's not in our English vernacular. So let me help you out. Go somewhere today, hardware store, Sam's, HCB, buy somewhere Monday. Buy some burlap sacks that house potatoes or whatever. Find it. Go home. Take your normal clothes off. Put on the sackcloth. Go outside in the backyard. Dig a hole. Sit down in the dirt. Find you some trash can you can burn a bunch of paper up in. Cardboard. And dump it on your head. And begin to sit there and mourn and cry. Sackcloth. And ashes. It was one of the most perhaps painful ways to induce and afflict pain to one's body in their moment of loss. But Mordecai is a type of the Holy Spirit. He's interceding for God's people. He's the one that started the prayer meeting. He's the one that said, I don't care if my, 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 my niece is in the palace. I don't care if she's wearing the crown that the king put on her head. I don't care what anybody, I'm not worried about Haman, the evil one. I'm going to sit right here in the middle of the city of Waco, Texas. I'm going to get at the circle. I'm going down to the mall. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to begin to cry and pray that God will wake up the church in 2022 that there will be revival 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 in the land I never read that I've read over it but I read that scripture where it said 
she heard about it. And it wasn't just him. When, when the other part of the family of God, the Jews, saw what he was doing, praying, crying aloud, calling on God, then the Bible said everybody in every province started mourning and praying and afflicting themselves with sackcloth and ashes. It caused a prayer revival. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you imagine a prayer revival breaking out among us? Well, we're going to have one. Oh, no, 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 please don't. It'll take up my time. But that's who I'm coming after. I want to get a hold of the modern day Esther. Is she here this morning? Surely not. Not among the holy. But that Esther don't have time to come to church twice a week. Much less on a Sunday night at 5 o'clock when the Dallas Cowboys are going to get back on TV and lose half their games. Pastor, please don't call prayer meeting. Well, we are. So I'm going to be bold enough to not be silent anymore. Because I like to have my time off on Sunday too. And ever since COVID, if you stop, people stop going to church. Now, I'm not hating on people that are trying to be wise in that moment. But get ready because the government is going to pass a law. I prophesy and there's going to be another wave. I don't know what it's going to be. But it's got to make us do what they want us to do. And who knows, they might shut us down on live stream. I've heard of other preachers shut down because they spoke the truth. What about the one we were hearing two years ago? Sister Olive, they said they were going to come get the preachers and put them in jail. You don't think that made preachers fear? Let me tell you something. Hundreds, thousands of churches closed. Hundreds, thousands of preachers quit the ministry. Some of them should have quit. They were probably hirelings anyway. Come on now. But don't forget the church heights. Some of the church eyes was glad when the church shut down. And there's one thing pastors hear all their life when they pass. Pastor, we want to know if we could just not have Sunday night or Wednesday night because we want to have more family time. I've heard that. Let's see, I'm not mad at God's people. I'm mad at the spirit of Antichrist who doesn't want to have anything to do with this Bible. Come on. And if you want to be real about it, the government doesn't hate your pretty little building. They don't care if you're still in a little beauty contest. Come to church, look pretty, look pretty, smell pretty. Come on, said by other pretty people. Look at somebody and say, you're smarter than I am. Come on, you sure look pretty. Make sure that ain't somebody else's wife. The bottom line is, they hate this book. I said they hate the Bible. They don't want to hear what God has to say about it. They don't want to hear thou shalt not steal. They don't want to hear thou shalt not covet. They don't want to hear thou shalt not commit adultery. They don't want to hear thou shalt not lie. They don't want to hear thou shalt have no other gods before me. They don't want to hear that he said honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy unto the Lord. It's a holy day. Work six days 24 7, but you ought at least give God one day. You say, I don't like your opinion. It's okay, everybody's got one. But the bottom line is, it's not about my opinion or yours, it's what God said. Seek ye first. The harvest time building. Seek ye first the Baptist. 
Seek ye first what? No, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And then all these other things will be added unto you. The, 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 the big test is don't let things come between you and honoring serving God. He said, I'll honor those that honor me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, first love, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he doth meditate day and night. Then he shall bring forth his fruit in his season. Not just the fruit of the ground and your labor, but the fruit of your, of your marriage. Children, grandchildren. His leaves shall not wither. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm younger than I look. They tell me the leaf uh, represents y y your age. Your leaves shall not wither. And then I love this part because I stood on it when I started the business. And whatsoever you doeth shall prosper. Give God a praise right now. Now, you prosper not as the world. You prosper in the things that God wants you to prosper in. God wants you to not be broke, busted, and disgusted. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have money. He wants you to have things so that you can bless others. It's a good book. Huh? Silent? No more. Let me go quick. World War II. Nazi Germany, man by the name of Hitler, not Haman in this story, Hitler was trying to overtake the world. People were really getting in their Bibles in. He had already conquered most of the northern country where he's at. And he was killing the Jews by the thousands. Six million, I believe, finally wound up the count, maybe more. He was burning them in incinerators, incinerators, starving them to death in wired camp situations. And he annihilated them. Kind of like some of the rich people in this world today I've been hearing. They want to get rid of people. Yeah. They want to kill off the elder. Oh, by the way, did I remind you that they're still trying to Every state now has a right to continue to kill babies. It's not God's order. America will be judged. Judgment is coming on America. But do you understand that Hitler was trying to overtake and there was a man that was in the presidency at that time by the name of Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt. I love history. He had ran on the agenda that five businessmen in America had caused the Great Depression before the war. And Roosevelt said, these men are bad. These men have, they've, they've mongered all the money to themselves. One of them was Chrysler. Another name of one man was DuPont. He called all these businessmen together. One was bowling, where came the great airplane. And he, he called them all together and he said, listen, guys, I know, now I'm paraphrasing, but they said it happened like this. He got them all together. They were his enemies when he ran for election. You know how politicians are. They don't always tell the truth. And he got them together, Brother Calvin, and I like this because there was disunity. He was in the White House, but there was war going on in the Middle East. Hitler was taking over. The spirit of Antichrist, same thing. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace, Hitler could have done a lot more damage. But he was coming to America eventually. He got all these five businessmen together. They sat in one room and he said, guys, listen, 
We've got to put our agendas on hold. In other words, he was saying, I don't care if you're a Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, it doesn't matter about that. I don't care if you are a Republican or Democrat or, or vegetarian. Come on. He said, the bottom line is this. He said, if we don't come together and get a plan that will fight against Hitler and stop this thing, then you're going to lose your businesses. You're going to lose your families. If we keep silent and don't stand up and use our voice and get to work and become a war machine for America, America will be destroyed. Liberty will be gone. Freedom of speech. Freedom to worship. Oh, I wish I knew who I was talking to today. Freedom to go where you want to and come in and leave. Freedom to make choices. You see, we're not China yet. We don't live under communism. We're not Russia yet. Though Putin is already not only challenged, but he's threatened America. I read it on my iPhone. If America tries to do anything to help the Baltic states, there could be nuclear war. You don't think we have a reason to pray today? You don't think a reason, we don't have a reason to stand up and let our voice be heard unto the God we serve who can move the hearts of kings and princes like the waters of the river? You don't think we have, is it, was it David who came to the battle of Goliath and everybody was in the trenches and Israel, God's people were hiding? He said, is there not a cause to fight? Should we not return to prayer and pray for your loved ones that are going to hell? You know they're not living right. You got brothers. You got cousins. You got aunts. You have, you have children that are going to split hell right open. And there's not a cause to pray. We can only come to church for an hour and a half on a Sunday morning. Well, after all, after all, pastor, they passed a law. We need to obey the law. You know, I think Mordecai challenged his niece, Esther, when she said, I can't go into the king's palace. I'll lose my life. I think sometimes you've got to challenge the law. Come on. God allowed his word to say one day when Jesus spoke, he said, render unto man that which is man's. Render unto God that which is God. Yeah. Now he was talking about money, but I'll guarantee you when it comes down to the laws of the land coming against the word of God, telling us we can't pray, I got news for the law of the land. I don't serve, though I'm thankful to be a citizen of America. I belong to the citizenship of heaven. I belong to the kingdom of God. I'm not going to let anybody take my family. There's a reason to stand. There's a reason to not be silent. I will not be silent. I'm going to preach the truth. I'm going to preach this gospel. I'm going to tell people today, Jesus is coming. Get on your knees. Pray, 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 pray. I said we got to stop this evil war machine you know we don't fight against flesh and blood we fight against principalities powers you're in a world where you see everything you operate in five natural senses you smell with your nose you taste with your mouth you hear with your ears some of you can hear some of you won't hear you feel things with your hands but I'm talking about the kingdom you can't see. I'm talking about the kingdom where the prophet told, God said, God, open my servant's eyes. Let him see the Syrian army around us. They're not bigger than the army that surrounds them. Can I shout? I 
am not alone. Jesus could have called 10,000 angels. But he held his peace on the cross. But you know when he got off the cross, though only one disciple was there that day, that he wound up in the upper room or that room they closed themselves in because the Roman soldiers and the government was threatening people. And they were hiding behind locked doors. They were having a church shutdown. But Jesus didn't let the door stop him. He is the door. He walked through the door. And he said, peace I speak unto you. Oh, let me tell you something. They were in lockdown. They were silent. But when the day of Pentecost happened, which needs to repeat itself today in this house, when the 120 got in that upper room, Garrett, they were in one mind, one accord. They weren't worried about where Calvin was going to take them to eat and pay for the meal. They weren't worried about this and over here. All they was thinking about was, I've got to get the promise that Jesus said I could have. There's going to be a power. There's going to be an anointing. And when it fell in the upper room, the Bible said they all spake in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. How are you going to fight the devil by yourself? The power was given so you would rule on the earth till he comes back. So if you're doing it by yourself, how's that working out? I got one here said not too good. Well, at least he's honest. I've been encouraging Ray to be in church. He started the business recently. I told him what happened to me. And I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to mentor. That's, that's my nephew. It was his mom told me to come back to church. There's her daughter right there. And if she's watching from the portals of heaven, must be a big smile on her face today. Because she's been praying. Maybe her life touched my life. And she said, maybe someone else will touch their life. No. Esther had a chance to touch the lives of God's people. But she said, I'm, I can't. There's a law. Mordecai. She said, let me tell you something. Don't you think for a moment, because you have a position and a title. If you keep silent and you don't go to the king, and you don't tell him what Haman's about to try to do to us, you're not going to live. Your family's not going to live. Your children are going to die. The ones to come, your whole family will be destroyed. Yeah. History. You know what they did in that time of World War II? 14 million women went to the factory and went to work. They stopped washing dishes. I'm teasing there. Men and women went to the battle. Factories were emptied, but those five businessmen started a war machine. Let me say, we don't need a war machine to battle flag. We need a warship. We need people that will worship. Starting on the 7th of August, prayer meeting, 5 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and worship. We're not coming to look pretty. The contest is over. We're not in a beauty contest. We're not trying to show everybody how good we look and we got the biggest steeple and we got the biggest building and we got the biggest choir and we got the biggest preacher. He weighs 350 pounds. We're not worried about all that. What we're saying is we need to get back where Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. There's no other thing I can tell you today that's going to save America and touch the world like the church getting back on its knees and coming together on a Sunday night at 5 o'clock to pray, pray, and worship God. 
Give God praise right there. I got to shut down. 14 million women, 14 million women, Brother Calvin, that went into those factories, produced one B-52 bomber in 24 hours. They were making seven ships, I believe, a week. Women. Women. 14 million women became the war machine production assembly line. You know what those women were saying? I'm not going to let Hitler take my kids. I'm not going to let Hitler take my grandkids. I refuse to let that demonized Hitler come into America and take my family, take all my children, take everything that I stood for. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to let my voice be heard. And I'm going to do what I need to do. Give God a shout of praise. <laughs> Silent. No longer. I'll close right here with this. When they received the power on Pentecost, Peter, that denied Jesus three times, stood silent at a fire while they were interrogating and persecuting. And when they accused him of being one of the church, one of his followers, he said, oh, not me. I don't even know the man. Really? When's the last time you prayed when you took your family out to dinner, but you wouldn't because you was ashamed somebody would see you praying? When's the last time you witnessed to somebody at the grocery store, at the gas pump? See, if you're going to stay silent, then people are going to die and go to hell. I'm challenging every one of us. You speak to people all day long somewhere, you ought to tell them about your church. Tell them about the good music. Tell them about your good-looking pastor. Come on. I'm just, I'm teasing. You got two pastors here. God put us together to build a force. I think we got a good force going on. Come on, come on. See, the good news, if you don't like my preaching, you got to listen to him next Sunday. (laughs) Now watch. This is closing. I'm just going to give you three, four examples. They came out of that upper room. The Peter that denied him wouldn't open his mouth. He got up and said, men, they took the power of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of tongues outside the four walls. And the Medes and the Persians and all of Jerusalem, thousands, heard them speaking in their language. It was a miracle. They said, what is this? What meaneth this? How are these Galileans speaking in our language? They're not even from our town. Peter stood up and said, oh, some of them said, these these people are drunk. Well, we need to have a drunk service at harvest time. I'd like to carry about 12 of y'all out the door. Listen to me. They got so full of the Holy Ghost, they were mad. They weren't ashamed. They weren't scared. And then the Bible said that he said, these men are not drunk with wine, as you suppose, seeing it's the third hour, 9 o'clock in the morning. But this is that. Somebody shout that. Which was prophesied by the prophet Joel in the last days of 2022. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. If they're hungry and thirsty. If they'll pray and come to me. Say God I need the power. To overcome sin in my life. And to be victorious. The Bible said. It'd be on your handmaidens, your sons. Third closing. You go to chapter 4. Peter and John are threatened. They're not speaking the name of Jesus. Maybe chapter 3 and all of a sudden they said we cannot speak the things whether we obey, obey man or God. We cannot speak but the things we've seen and those things we've heard. We've got to speak the truth. We can't keep silent. Yeah. Chapter 3, that man was healed at the gate beautiful. He wasn't even in the building, thank God. 
But the Bible said when he was healed because Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee. Touch your neighbor and say, I need some such. Such as I have. Holy Ghost. I give unto thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. The man was over 40 years old. He was silent no longer. He got up. His ankles and, and, and his feet received strength. And he began to run and praise God. There was a woman with 12 years of blood issues. Spent everything she had. Called little miss nobody from nowhere. The Bible said she was silent. She was not supposed to be in the crowd. There was a law. She got on her hands and knees, one preacher said, and she pressed. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Who needs a healing? Who needs deliverance? Who needs to be saved? Who needs God to break the chains of bondage? She pressed through the crowd. And the Bible said she touched the hem of her garment, his garment, and she was made whole. Now watch, watch. She didn't say a word to nobody. And Jesus stopped crowd around him, pushed, said to the disciples, who touched me? Somebody touched me. The disciples said, Master, everybody's around you. They're thronging you to death. How do you know which one? He knows when you touch him by faith. He knows when you're desperate. He knows when you believe, I am the God that healeth thee. He knows when you believe no weapon formed against me will prosper. He knows when you realize he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide forever. He knows when you say no pestilence will come nigh my dwelling. He'll rebuke the devourer that's trying to destroy me. Jesus turned around and said, who touched me? She said, I'm not going to be silent anymore. I did. Oh, stand on your feet right now. 